for me, the whole idea of the story was that, and Gandhiji incorporating it was that, you know, uh, Ahimsa is not just about, uh, you know, your actions. Mm -hmm. It's also about your thoughts. It is also uh, about your uh, articulation. In my mind, and I remember that, you know, and that's something you encounter in history also. When you think of Ahimsa, you also think of Himsa. Of course. Uh, so, you know, when I used to think about uh, Gandhiji, one thing when I was a kid, which I just, uh, you know, couldn't uh, process was the fact that while he symbolized Ahimsa, he himself, uh, you know, had such a violent uh, death. Uh, so that really confused me as a child. The Buddha lived in very violent times. And uh, you see, ironically enough, uh, all the renunciatory sects also got great patronage from all these, uh, you know, rulers and polities that were fighting each other or within their own state, X was killing off his, uh, you know, father or his brother or a series of brothers and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, we have to uh, keep that in mind and whether the Mahabharat was earlier than the renunciatory tradition, I don't know. But certainly my sense is that it is uh, earlier and there is the idea of uh, nonviolence that is there, but it is just one idea. It's not, uh, it's not a central idea. In fact, the text is steeped in violence. So, uh, and if you think about the Shanti Parva and you think about what uh, you know, the dying Bhishma, the message he's giving to the vacillating uh, Yudhishthir. He tells him that, look, you be the king, you win heaven, you protect the virtuous and kill, kill the wicked, because you cannot actually be a king without a violence. And that's what makes ancient India, I think, so interesting. Yeah. That even within all the Hinsa, there are, uh, you know, and even in texts like the Mahabharata, which yeah. you see as full of killing and war and I mean, all sorts of, uh, you know, bhashans on the importance of uh, the battle and so on and so forth. You have this deep thinking that is happening yeah. on, uh, you know, Ahimsa and this deep thinking is taken to another level. But my sense is the pragmatism really comes from a recognition that religious teachers cannot do uh, you know, cannot go beyond the point. They simply yeah. don't uh, have, uh, you know, that kind of power. Yeah. Uh, you think about what he says about Kalinga, that is something that, uh, you know, I used to feel constantly uh, moved about, that here is a ruler who has won a big war, but mm -hmm. he sees himself as actually having lost, uh, you know, he is from the jaws of victory, snatching defeat, uh, he sees himself as a, a defeated king because he takes responsibility for all the violence that he mm. has perpetrated, mm. right? So uh, when you think about somebody talking of his greatest uh, military success as yeah. a defeat yeah. because of the violence mm. and that he is now turning towards, away from that towards a new path, this really contrasts with the archetype of, uh, you know, a self-serving king or politician. Yeah. And you think of a person like Gandhiji and you think, well, you know, these are the universal Indians that we have. Uh, yeah. People who actually, uh, you know, uh, worked out a path for themselves. Ashok is remembered as a Buddhist king, not because of his non-violence, mm. but because uh, you know, he's the archetypal Buddhist king. He builds stupas. He gets uh, the earlier stupas where you have the relics of the Buddha opened, most of them with one exception, and he redistributes those relics. He gives Buddhism a kind of uh, visibility uh, across India and beyond, which it yeah. doesn't have prior uh, to his time period. Yeah. And then you have a Nehru who gives, he's the only ruler of India who considered Ashok uh, as a kind of, uh, as a kind of political figure to be emulated. Where is the spiritualism coming from? Is the spiritualism coming from raw power? You know, political power, military power, coercive power, no. 
spiritualism is uh, grounded and anchored in uh, you know a whole lot of uh, individuals and traditions in which there's absolutely no doubt that the buddha and then gandhi are the two greats that india has uh, produced and both of them were uh, in a sense completely immersed in issues relating to non violence the whole question and within the vector of violence you know trying to uh, uh, trying to work out uh, you know how you can produce a, a more moral way forward within all these issues so there is idealism there but there is also so much positivity and uh, that's that's the india that you know i uh, you know i feel comfortable with